Hey guys and welcome to the channel. Now in this video we're checking out the new Mercedes-Benz GLA facelift. It looks pretty smart and I've had this exclusive invite to come check it out and uh, well there it is. Now uh, we're going to check of course the interior out, the boots, the rear seats and of course the multimedia system, all the different changes and at the very end Mercedes-Benz themselves have actually got a test drive lined up for me as well. So loads to go through. Let's check it out. So here it is guys, the facelift. Now I can't stress this enough, it is a facelift. Uh, for those of you who are new to Mercedes-Benz, uh, basically Mercedes-Benz typically bring out new models every six, seven years or so, but there is a facelift slap bang usually in the middle about three four years and this is that it's kind of like a, a mid-cycle upgrade a little refresh if you will usually on a refresh you get some really cool elements so things like more aggressively styled bumpers and more angular lines towards the middle of the car so even like here for example on the new lights uh, before they kind of had this like wavy design but now they're kind of straight angular all to the middle of course surrounding that big mercedes-benz badge in the middle now there aren't too many other changes, I'll go through uh, price and dimensions uh, in just a moment. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the exterior, everything's pretty much the same. Uh, but a lot of changes are of course on the interior, which we will go through in a minute. So the new JLA has a on the road price of just under £38,000. Uh, now I should add, uh, this is AMG line, the starting price in the UK, and of course correct at the time of recording, that is actually for the sport version. So there's actually two trim levels. Uh, in the UK, e even still. So I don't think there are many models in Mercedes that still have that, but the GLA still does. This is AMG line here, and basically with AMG line, you'll have these extra kind of elements just here, larger wheels, and just kind of these sporty elements around the car, just to kind of give it a more kind of dynamic look. Right, so dimensions. Now, I do remember using this example a few years ago when I filmed the previous GLA, and um, I used a uh, paperclip to kind of demonstrate this. And um, I'm gonna do the same again. So basically with this GLA, well, as with all new cars, they are always all slightly bigger than the previous one. So this one's no different, but width mirror to mirror is exactly the same. And the length is the one that's slightly different. So if you grab a paper clip and half that is how much difference it is on the length. So it's like literally just under two centimeters. So technically bigger, but you know, if you're parking in the garage or something, um, I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine. It's so minimal. I should add, there is a slight difference between Sport and AMG line, just because some elements stick out slightly more than others. But again, this is millimeters we're talking about. So um, yeah, dimensions wise, it's pretty much the same. Now guys, when it comes to the boot, it goes up to 487 liters, which is pretty good. Uh, now I say up to, because it does actually depend on the engine you go for. So if you go for a petrol, diesel will vary ever so slightly, uh, but then plug-in hybrid, I think it goes down to about 445, around about that area, just because that's where the lithium-ion battery goes. It goes underneath uh, to help propel and power you along. Uh, but yeah, if you go for petrol, diesel, um, I believe that most of the new ones obviously come with these, which is like a reversible mat, which are quite handy. Um, now, petrol diesel, what is quite good is you can actually adjust the floor. So say you want a little bit more boot space, you can pull this out, lower it down, and then you've got some um, even more space. So it's kind of like about that much more. So yeah, quite useful if you use the boots quite a lot with uh, luggage or I don't know, push chair, a pram or something like that. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. Now, of course you can fold the seats down as well. So this is a 40-20-40 split like most cars. So, and of course you can take the parcel shelf out as well, just in case. So yeah, all round a nice practical boot. Of course, if you need bigger, this, don't forget, this is the smallest SUV that Mercedes-Benz do. There's GLB and GLC and GLE. So there's larger ones as well, and even GLS if you want the ultimate boot. But um, yeah, for ease of use of parking, a nice practical boot, it's pretty good. 
Right guys, so on to the rear seats. Now, as always, I set up uh, this seat up for my driving position and uh, new viewers, just for some context, um, I do have naturally long legs anyway and a uh, kind of shorter body, but there is loads more room in here than like an A-Class, for example, basically SUV A-Class. The um, main reason for that is because of the height. I can get spout well, almost my entire hand above my head, which is pretty cool. And that's the kind of illusion you get in here with, um, because it's got the kind of extra headroom, it just feels so much more spacious in here, which is good. And of course, it's nice and easy to get in and out of because it's raised off the ground. But um, yeah, pretty good. Door bins, uh, there's nice uh, storage in there, just in case you have uh, your drinks or anything. Uh, in the middle, there are two USB-C ports for anyone who wants to charge their phone or tablet. Right, that is the rear. Let's have a look at the front, and this is where all the changes happen, and then we have a drive. Now guys, if you're loving today's video, make sure you are subscribed. So a staggering 90% of you aren't subscribed to my channel. So if you love premium cars, more specifically Mercedes as well, if you have Mercedes-Benz, you're thinking about buying Mercedes-Benz, there's loads of videos that I covered on my channel from tips, tricks, reviews, walkthrough guides, you name it. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and down below in the comment section, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll always try and get back to people as soon as I can. Right guys, so changes on the interior. Now, first and foremost, uh, just in the middle here, there is no touchpad now. So just like the A-Class and the B-Class, touchpad's been removed. They've kind of got this little storage area, I guess for like coins or something, or if you have like a small phone, it could probably go in there. But yeah, you actually use the screen using touch screens. So you can obviously swipe left and right like this. And uh, then you can do it on the steering wheel as well, just like that, and of course, talk to it. So, um, all those kind of elements there are exactly the same apart from the touchpad. Um, other few other buttons just moved areas down here. So if you had a um, uh, Mercedes Benz before, you would have had a toggle switch for the driving mode. Now it's just a dedicated button. But yeah, everything else in terms of the style is the same there. Up front here on the multimedia system, which we'll go through in a minute, has a new software version or new generation, should I say. So this is MBUX version two or NTG seven. More on that in a moment. Um, now, in terms of the actual interior, I really do like GLA actually because for one it has these kind of like red strips that go down here which um, I think is the same as the B-Class but for some reason you don't get it on the A-Class and of course someone at the moment has got it on um, angry red. <laughs> you can change it to virtually any colour you fancy so um, yeah that's pretty cool. Uh, climate control is exactly the same as before so that's all adjustable just on there so super easy to use. And um, yeah, I guess um, we'll go through the screen, then we'll go through the steering wheel. So multimedia system, this is uh, so the new generation of MBOX, so Mercedes-Benz's latest multimedia system. It is really, really good. New features, headline features, uh, has wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto now. Uh, some cars also have wireless charging just in here, so you don't even need to use a cable at all, which is pretty good. But um, if you do want to, then there's um, two USB-C ports in there, another one there. So that's, um, yeah, what was it? One, two, three, four, five USB-C ports now. So everyone can charge their phone at the same time. Pretty cool. And there's, of course, there's wireless charging as well. And there's a 12 volt socket as well. God, all about that luxury. <laughs> no, no, it's not about USB-C ports, but yeah, that's, that's quite a few actually. Back to the screen. Uh, yeah, wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Uh, the multimedia system itself, as I said, is, is brand new. Uh, when using the satna for example it's even easier before it used to use the where to at the bottom but i do have a walkthrough guide on how to use this sat nav so if you want to know how that works click on the pop-up and up above but if that's not working there'll be a link in the description down below as well but it's pretty easy you just press where to and then um, kind of go from there going back to the home screen there's of course phone you connect your phone up and it'll actually prompt if you want to do the wireless carplay or wireless android auto automatically which is pretty good and of course then there's a radio now again, just like the previous multimedia system generation, it's super easy to use. You literally just swipe across to your preferred kind of radio station and it'll just play. I've got it muted at the moment, but um, yeah, volume control is directly in the middle here. And of course you can do it on the steering wheel as well. So uh, yeah. One final thing on the multimedia system before going through some more advanced things. Uh, on the next page, there's media. So that's if you're gonna play music over your phone, over Bluetooth. Um, and or of course CarPlay, Android Auto, and then there's uh, USB-C, so you can plug stuff in as well into the USB-C ports. So uh, yeah, that is the kind of basics for the multimedia system. I do have a walkthrough guide on 
every single function on that so if you guys want to know more about that multimedia system i recommend people check out the chapters in that video just because it is about an hour long going through everything so um, that's more advanced uh, you know if you do get one then maybe you want to look at that one day but um yeah that's the multimedia system a couple of extra cool things of course you can change the colors as i mentioned so if you go into comfort you can tweak the colors and change it up a bit make all the um elements blue which is i know a lot of people's uh, favorites but um yeah so many different colors on there you can tweak and change so uh just to personalize it all really now moving on to the steering wheel and the instrument cluster um, i just wanted to explain uh, just a few bits about this now this steering wheel is exactly the same one that's in my own car and um, i can literally speak honestly from experience i love the steering wheel it's really really good the only thing is that there aren't any physical buttons on it so for example um, say i'm on this screen here and i want to go across to the normal classic kind of view there aren't any physical buttons so if you're driving you you can't actually can't really feel where the buttons are now i know where they are just because i have a car with exactly the same steering wheel and you you kind of do get used to it after a while um it takes a bit of what i would kind of describe as muscle memory to remember where everything is um but yeah literally if you were to do this because there's no physical buttons you can't feel them click it's just a flat surface some people don't like that so all i can say is just take a car up for a test drive try out everything of course it's going to drive lovely all cars do these days but try out your experience with using the steering wheel and just see how you get on so to do this for example if you want to change a few things on the screen simply press the home button just on the top right and then you can swipe left and right and to do this you literally just swipe kind of on this bit here left and right there is like a small indent here but obviously just try it out for yourself and see how you get on but yeah the one i want is uh, classic so you go on there and then you've got your more traditional kind of dials which um, i know a lot of people usually use right well i guess after all of that um we have got the test drive now sadly this car is of course in a mercedes-benz showroom so um i don't think they'd appreciate it if i took this out um they'd probably come chasing after me in like a amg or something <laughs> um but Mercedes-Benz themselves have actually got a test drive event uh, which has the new GLA there so this is actually in a couple of days time so let's skip straight to that so then guys here I am with Mercedes-Benz and we're at this really really cool diner in the middle of Oxfordshire but um, we're here to drive the car so I've got a GLA 220D formatic for this one so let's switch it on there we go right into drive using the uh, kind of gear stick on the right hand side and away we go so then guys let's cover the engines off first now like most mercedes-benz cars they have mild hybrid technology now and they do have the same kind of engine powers just as before but with that extra mild hybrid so mild hybrid let's just very quickly cover that off now i do have this in my own car as well and i've, I've got to say it's very very clever how it works not to be confused with a plug-in hybrid or anything like that mild hybrid just traditionally works in the background and does a few things to help improve efficiency and economy and also gives you a bit of a boost as well so it can make you go a bit quicker depending on your drive mode so let's cover engines so engines on the gla they start on the petrol front at gla 200 that's a 1.3 liter petrol engine 163 horsepower so remember that's a 1.3 liter 163 horsepower it's lightning fast and of course there's also that mild hybrid technology as well which helps uh, of course with efficiency and gives you a bit more power so it pulls away pretty quickly now if you want to go the eco route there's the gla 250e now this is a plug-in hybrid this requires you to actually plug it in kind of clues in the name this will give you all electric driving up to 43 and 48 miles on wltp which is pretty good because i do remember plug-in hybrids they used to be around 7 10 maybe 20 most recently 30 but now they're almost touching 50 on a lot of them now so really really good to see this one's in the high 40s and lastly on the diesel front there's a gla 200d and a gla 220d now the main difference between these two apart from the power of course one being 150 horsepower and one being 190 horsepower 
GLA 220D also has 4Matic. Now, 4Matic is Mercedes-Benz's four-wheel drive system. Now, in the GLA, it's actually adaptive. So, primarily, day-to-day, -day, when you drive the car, it's going to be on front-wheel drive, but when you need the power, it will automatically, in milliseconds, fractions of second, it will literally put the power to the back. So, if you put it in sport mode, drive really quickly, or if it's wet and windy, rainy, horrible weather we often get in the UK, it's quite a good option to have. And last but not least, if you wanted to go for a Mercedes AMG engine, yes, you can get an AMG in a GLA. This will go up to 306 horsepower on Mercedes Benz's GLA 35. And uh, obviously has some quite unique uh, styling on the front with the grille, just to differentiate it between the normal models. So what's the GLA like to drive? Well, if you compare it with, for example, an A-Class hatchback or a saloon or a CLA or something like that, the interiors are like almost identical. In fact, if you owned one of those cars and then jumped in this, you'd notice pretty much every button's in the same place, which is pretty cool. But there's one slight difference with GLAs. They're a lot taller. There's a lot more headroom in, in a car like this, which is really good, considering if you want a nice, easy car to get in and out of, but don't want it too big to parking in cities, towns, garages, or something like that. So the GLA is really, really good. In fact, there was one that's just gone by there. <laughs> so they are quite popular on the road. Now I have had the awesome luxurious experience of having a GLA 200D for a weekend once and that was about a year ago so that was the model before this and I was actually pleasantly surprised it's actually really, really nice it's a little bit softer on the road compared to like an A-Class or a CLA which you would kind of expect with a bit more ground clearance for being an entry-level SUV uh, but yeah it's, it's just a little bit softer on the road which is kind of what you'd expect from a Mercedes-Benz Compared with the Mercedes-Benz B-Class, which I'll link up above if you haven't heard of that one, it's a very, very similar car to this. The only difference really between the two is just in terms of styling of the body shape, because again, the interiors are almost identical. So it's almost down to your personal preference, which one you want to go for, and of course, engine availability as well. So yes, all round, I absolutely do love the GLA. It's just gonna give you that little bit more extra space compared to like a, a CLA or an A-Class hatchback or A-Class saloon and that sort of thing. So uh, if, if you're a fan of those cars and the styling with all the double widescreen displays that Mercedes have in the cars these days, just want a bit more practicality, GLA's the one to go for. Now guys, I wanted to give a huge shout out to, first of all, Sandown Mercedes-Benz for letting me film these static shots in the showroom in Mercedes-Benz pool. And then lastly, Mercedes-Benz UK for allowing me to drive this car here today. So shout out to both of them, Sandown Mercedes and Mercedes-Benz UK for basically making this video happen. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button and the like button and we'll see you all very soon.